from a very selfish standpoint, I want to ask you a question. So <clears throat> I always do my strength training in the morning and, um, many days I just don't, I I'm either not that hungry or I kind of run out of time before I need to jump into stuff. And I'm not always diligent about eating or consuming protein right after that workout. Um, now truthfully in part, it's cause well, well, I want to ask you this question. Let's just assume two scenarios. Scenario one is <clears throat> finish exercising, finish strength training, consume nothing but water, coffee for another three or four hours before consuming a high protein meal versus <clears throat> finish exercising and immediately consume 25 grams of whey protein in a shake with nothing else in it, just whey protein in water. You know, you're getting a hundred calories, chug it down and then eat that you know, protein rich meal of 40 grams, <clears throat> four hours later, significant difference in muscle protein synthesis between these two over the course of days. Um, or does it all come out in the wash where assuming you get ISO amounts of protein throughout the day, uh, does it matter? Um, on 24 hours, definitely, uh, there's a difference. Uh, so, um, for example, if you ingest protein immediately after exercise, you get, at least for the first five hours, you definitely have a much greater response because exercise makes the muscle more sensitive to the anabolic response to food intake. However, what people forget is that your response to breakfast the next day is still increased and probably also your lunch and dinner the next day. So if you do an exercise session today and you get all freaked out that you didn't get a, a, a milkshake after your, after your session, don't worry, because the next day, all your three meals are going to be greater responses because of the exercise. So I get so many times the question like, how important is the meal before or after the exercise? And I say, if you do a cons consistent training, then there's always three meals before your session and after your session because you train every day. So then every meal is still responding to the previous exercise session. Now, is there a benefit of immediately after exercise versus a few hours later? We've done that study by, so not sure whether we touched that, that topic as well, uh, pre-sleep protein feeding. That's a topic that we've been working a lot on also on patients. So we gave people, I think it was even 60 gram, really proof of principle study, exercise in the evening and then 40 or 60, I don't remember. Um, we gave protein then and then we measured the response the next morning after breakfast after 20 grams of protein in the morning. So what I was thinking, like if there is a window of opportunity, then if you give 60 grams of protein immediately after exercise, maybe you shorten the window of opportunity. So if you already provided the exercise after after the session, you don't respond as well to the, the, the next dinner the next morning. Does that make sense? Yeah, what I'm basically hearing you say is, <clears throat> if you have 100 units of response in you, the timing of your meal might not impact the total amount of response. It just determines when that response occurs. So if you, if I slug that 25 grams of whey protein, as I'm walking out of the gym, I will get more of my hundred units of response then, but I will get less of it four or five hours later when I have a big protein lunch. I think that's a much clearer explanation than that. So that was basically the design of the study. And it fits with what I've learned, of course, for glycogen, because you ingest carbohydrates immediately after exercise. So you expedite, you accelerate glycogen resynthesis. But if you don't have to exercise until tw two days later, it doesn't make a difference because then you have a full 100% recovery of your glycogen. Which again is very different from the way I grew up, right? I mean, when I grew up as an endurance athlete, we were and again, you know, it could all be wives tales, but the traditional thinking was you need to be mainlining carbohydrates the second you get off the bike or out of the water or whatever, because you have this very small glycogen window where for an hour you're going to maximally assimilate. <clears throat> and it might be the case that, well, that's true. Your maximum assimilation would occur in that window, but you will still uh, you will still incorporate carbohydrate into glycogen later. It just might not occur at as high a rate. Is that kind of the same situation? If you're exercising every Saturday, it doesn't make a difference. Louise Burke has clearly shown within 24 hours, your glycogen are back to normal. If yeah. you are in the Tour de France and you have to uh, excel every day, 
you're going to miss uh, the second, the third day of the tour if you don't start uh, uh, taking in carbohydrates after the session. Yeah. Now, going back to um, so that study, protein ingestion after an exercise session performed in the evening, does that impact your response to morning? And so the other trial was no protein after the exercise and doing the same thing in the morning. I thought that the response to breakfast would be reduced if you already ingested that 60 grams of protein in the evening. It didn't. Hmm. The responses were exactly the same to my surprise. So the responses to breakfast, exactly the same. So net, I must say, that the people ingested the 60 grams prior to sleep had a benefit in that time frame. Whether it's caught up later on, 24, 48 to 72 hours, I don't know. In other words, yeah, I was going to ask you that. You only did this for one breakfast and and one dinner breakfast and bre uh, sleep session. Yeah, so, so these studies, so the studies with infusion of tracers hmm. are almost always limited to about 12 to 24 hours. Why? Because you have these turnover of the tissues. So at some point, your tracer will become available from the breakdown. And then you're measuring tracer recycling. Yep. So you need different techniques, and we can go into that with D2O. Um, there's different techniques to, to counter that. But if there's acute tracer infusion studies, you're limited to 12 to up to 24 hours. But so far, long-term training studies basically have shown that protein supplementation can further increase gains in muscle mass and muscle strength. I mean, that, that evidence is, is, is there. It, the, the evidence becomes smaller when people eat more protein. Um, and it gets stronger if you look at people that do not consume enough protein. I mean, we had a black and white response to frail elderly, six months of training. If we didn't provide them additional protein, they didn't gain more muscle. So the, the, the more frail people are, the more important the amount of protein gets, but it's also because they're not consuming a lot. I want to actually come back to the elderly uh, in some detail, but I, I do want to kind of put a bow on this topic here, which is we don't really know over the long term, meaning over months and years, if there is a benefit to consuming a very highly digestible, rapidly absorbed, good quality amino acid composition protein in the immediate aftermath following exercise. It sounds like it's still unclear if there could be a net benefit. So if a person listening to this says, look, I want everything in my favor to maximize my odds of, you know, optimization and maximization of muscle mass, I'm going to consume 25 grams of whey protein following every workout. Again, from a caloric perspective, it's irrelevant. It's 100 calories, right? It's like less than 5% of your daily intake. But it would arguably be the most uh, efficient way to deliver amino acids. Um, is there any reason not to do that? Let's just start with that. Is there any is there any downside of of doing that um, as opposed to going through the hassle of consuming a meal when you finish your training? No, on the individual, absolutely not. Uh, the only problem that I do have is that if you advocate too much to to use like like protein supplements and stuff like that, people stop thinking about their food. Yeah. So we've had people coming in here saying like, oh, I, I'm really, really, I'm, I, I put a lot of interest in my nutrition and my diet. And then I asked them, so how do you do it? Yeah, I take 29 supplements. Yeah, that's, I mean, I want to just, just first think about your nutrition. And if every meal contains good solid foods and with ample, ample protein, if you then on top of that decide that it's easier and more practical to take away protein supplements after training session, be my guest. Yeah. But if all the rest is crap, then please do not even consider those whey protein supplements because first think about your nutrition. And I've I, I've never I've never had, so I had a lot of people in my life asking me like, how important is it whether I take my protein shake before or after the training session? But I had never somebody that came up to me like, look, how important is it if I'm if I skip one training session? or I miss one training session. Consistent training is the benefit. Consistent training so that every meal is a greater impact on your muscle protein synthesis. It's yeah. the same, the questions I always get, like like interviewers on the radio, and they say, uh, look, uh, what should we eat in order to lose weight? And I have only one resp uh, response, it's less. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. But that's people. People just want to. It's easier to 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 eat, to drink a whey protein supplement than actually just uh, leave the house at six o'clock in the morning and do an extra session of training.